So uh, thank you very much, Brianna. I really appreciate you joining us today. I know that uh, it's an incredibly busy time for you with everything that is going on in, in the world right now. Yes, There's so a thank rumor, you for having rumor, me. Rumor is that you're in a game that's coming out uh, momentarily, so. So I'm told. Let's, let's, let's assume it's true. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Brianna White. She's the voice of Aerith. Now, you, Brianna, you're no, you're no uh, stranger to streaming, so you can put me to shame. And I was just, I was just complimenting what I thought was some like cardboard pop-up green screen, but it's actually <laughs> your wall. Yes, which this is, is my green screen quite wall. Quite impressive. Yes. It's and we, very handy. We were discussing the like I I've assumed there there would have to be like a special type of green screen paint, which apparently there is. And that apparently must be very is. hard to do and not get because I like I've used green screen before and it's it's quite the quite the challenge. Yes. And even as a wall, it still has its challenges. You can see if it's not lit exactly evenly, I'm gonna have to up my tolerance and then my hair starts keying out. It's a whole adventure. And my curiosity asks what kind of microphone you have there too. What kind of mic is that? This is the Blue Blackout Spark XLR mic. It's my first XLR mic. Right, I gotcha. upgraded from my Blue Yeti. So I'm that goes into a it. mixing desk and then into your computer. It goes from into there. an interface. Yeah, gotcha. I just have a Scarlet. Fair. Well, I'm sorry. I am. Uh, I am yetied today so actually I'm no yeti, i loved yeti, my yeti for a really long time yeti i used in, it when i started in 2015 yeti in more than one form yeti in microphone and yeti in look because i have barely left yes. the house in three weeks so yes we all bit. have to understand it's coronavirus looks today it is, it's yeah. okay <laughs> i was talking to john yesterday uh he was uh recording lines and he was in like this black tent and I was like, what, yeah. what are you? And I didn't I, like, because I've never seen anyone record in their home studio before. And he looked like he was on like a, an episode of the Blair Witch Project. And he like, he had like the full on beard and then he was like all hunched over. And I was like, what are you doing, John? But I realized he's, uh, I would assume that's to stop the echo then. then yes. Then, yeah. Yes, I'm loving seeing everybody's home studios right now. People are tweeting their pictures of their home studios. Mine is not a voiceover home studio. It's a YouTuber home studio. So I have to make some adjustments, but everything's sold out on Amazon now. Of uh, course. We, we can't even get Amazon right now. It's a 30 day yeah. wait for prime delivery right now. Oh yeah. And someone just said that my microphone looks like a steering wheel. So I'll keep that in mind next Ooh, time I yeah. take off the pop shield, but there you go. Whatever. Anyway, thank you. I do appreciate you joining me. I know that you had back to back interviews this morning. Did they go well? They went really well. I had some great interviewers this morning. It Can I awesome. ask who they were with? Are we allowed to know? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they, I, were, they were I set up assume... by Square, I assume. Yeah, so okay. I, I would assume it's fine, um, assuming they don't like hate what I gave them and pull the content. Mm -hmm. But it was for Games Radar and How to Kill an Hour podcast. Okay, cool. Yeah, so keep an eye out for those. We absolutely will. <laughs> so it's uh, I know that we we've discussed this at a Coupacon, but we're going to just kind of go back to square one. And uh, what's kind of sad is that we were meant to be we would have just done a Coupacon. We would have done Montreal La Palm what, four or five days ago. So that's quite disappointing. And I know a lot of the fans were looking forward to seeing you. So hopefully, uh, you know, we can line up the new dates and get everything set up. But um, just uh, let's let's go way back and talk about the experience of getting to where you are. Now, you already mentioned that you're a pro streamer. It's something that you you passionately do and you've been very successful at it. Um, I think the wall can to attest to that. <laughs> and uh, uh, so tell us how you got from from that to going to audition for the part of Aerith. I have been an actress for my whole life, and I have been an actress for much longer than I've been a streamer. I started streaming because as an actor, professionally, a lot of it is dependent on your team. So your agent or your manager, you know, pitching you and making sure that you're getting submitted for things. Um, so I wanted something that was a little bit in my control mm -hmm. more. And so that's why I started streaming. I had been playing a lot of video games in my spare time and I thought I might as well make something out of this something useful anyway well, you're a fan of the series aren't you like oh I know that you play 14 and you've played many other titles in the series so I've played 14 and I streamed 15 or I, I recorded it for YouTube I wasn't streaming yet at the time I think I've seen your let's play on YouTube 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. So right now all of my content is live streamed on Twitch first and then it's transferred over to YouTube gotcha. as a let's play. Um, so voice acting was not something that was ever in my realm. I had asked my agent if I could start voice acting and she said, well, what can you do? And I said, I, I don't know. Uh, I'd only taken a few classes at the time. And so that was kind of where that ended. And, um, the casting director for Final Fantasy VII Remake reached out to my theatrical agent. I didn't have a voiceover demo. I didn't have a voiceover specific agent. She just found me and said, let's get her in for an audition. And I said, holy moly, of course. And being a gamer, I understood the significance of the audition. Mm. So I don't know if that's something that helped or hurt, but I'm assuming it helped. <laughs> mm. I'm just going to make the assumption that you didn't say holy moly. I'm going to assume you said something stronger than that. <laughs> uh, it could have been something akin to holy guacamole. Yeah, could have. Well, that's, yeah. that's pretty strong. That's probably probably what it was, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, thinking back to that moment. Mm. Holy guacamole. Exactly what happened. <laughs> so you go in for this audition. And yes. uh, you, I imagine they give you some lines to read for the part. Do you recall what lines they gave you for that? I, I recall some of them. Um, I can say that here, this is for you from okay, the first so trailer. Very close was, to the beginning. Was part of it. Gotcha. Yeah. That's a bit of an iconic yeah. line. So if you can't it pull is. that one off, then it's probably not going to work out, right? It is. So yeah. you go to the audition and then if I recall, I think you had like uh, like most people do, you had a fairly long wait before you heard anything back. And then you make the assumption that nah, I probably didn't get it. That's exactly how it went. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure this is not happening. They're going to go with someone famous. They're going to go with someone with more experience. I don't even know why I was given the chance to audition. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure there was no way it was going to happen, but I still hoped and and I guess the hope paid off then. It did. <laughs> yeah, it did. So the the part comes along, you start recording lines, uh, and then the announcement is made for the remake, and the character of Aerith is connected with you. How did that play out for you? I mean, professionally, I'm sure it was amazing, but even personally, it must have been quite a moving experience. I think that it couldn't have been better timed because I was already going to be going to E3 as a content creator. Right. And so being able to go to E3 and see all of my content creator friends and all of my professional contacts after having just had this big announcement go up was just an incredible experience because people came up to me like, I can't believe it. You, such big news. I'm so excited. You didn't tell me. And I'm like, I couldn't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it was a really, really, really exciting way to kick off the news. Mm. It was, it was awesome. I can, I can, I can only imagine. Uh, it must've been like, an, I guess you really wouldn't have met too many of your co-voice actors at the time either. Like, I think, I think you may have, crossed paths with a few in a corridor but that's probably about it right i met john bentley and erica lindbeck for the first time at the press conference at e3 mm, both great characters gosh they're amazing mm. there's a really oh, good and, lineup uh, of people he was at the press conference as well ah, so okay. i met cody at the press conference gotcha well, uh, what we did is we uh got uh, uh our community to submit some questions so, Fabulous. And, Excited. Uh, Alan very kindly took the time to pick out the ones that he thought were best. So I have not pre-read these. So we will see. Thanks, if, Alan. Yeah, we'll see if Alan's <laughs> done a good job. Um, so Yasmin asks, was it intimidating to be cast in the role uh, in, in the role as iconic as Aerith? And did this or anything else affect the way you have chosen to portray her? Intimidating is definitely a word for it. Because she is, she's as iconic as it gets in gaming, really. I, I know you're playing 7 now. Had you played it before? No, I'm playing 7 now. Okay. I hadn't played it before, but I'd known of her. Right. And if you know of a character from a game you've never played, you know it's a big that deal. speaks to it. Yeah. So that, that speaks to 
how intense this character is and, mm -hmm. and how well loved she is. And uh, when I got the audition, of course, I did tons of research, watched lots of Let's Plays and watched Advent Children and uh, watched lots of cutscenes and did a bunch of research. So I had known a lot about her, but still I felt like there was something else missing in that I didn't know too much about her in relation to how she was to people. Mm. And so that was the most intimidating part is I know a lot about the details of her character, her backstory, how, what happens to her, all of that. But it took a little bit more time for me to be able to experience who she is in the fandom's heart. Gotcha. And, and that has been a developing journey as time has gone on, because every time I see someone write an article about her or tweet me or someone else about what Aerith means to them, hmm. I get a deeper and deeper love and appreciation for her. So intimidating, absolutely. But rewarding, absolutely. Like, And also with this character, I know that Aerith has been portrayed in other things such as Advent Children, Dissidia, um, but Kingdom re Hearts. exactly. But really, in the in her original form, she had never been voice acted. So that must have given you a little bit of a freedom to kind of say, "This is kind of how I imagine Aerith to be." Did you did you like go in with an idea of what you wanted to do? Did you do you think you pushed your own, you know, um, portrayal on that character without you know? Obviously, every every voice director will always give you guidance on what they're expecting. But uh, I know that when John went in, he he said, "No, no, I'm not doing that. This is what I want to do." Did you did you get bossy? Did you say, "No, this is this is kind of what I have in mind"? I honestly didn't have the experience to do that. Okay, I didn't have. I I just didn't know that I could, mm -hmm. and I was just excited to be a part of anything. Mm -hmm. And I would say that where I sort of inserted most of myself from the very beginning and probably what helped me most in the audition is that I didn't try to copy any of the voice actors. You know, I listened to the other voice actors. But you and did your own thing. Yes. I yes. think that's important. Yes. Because if, if you're just going to mimic someone else, then they might as well have just brought in that same person. And if they're bringing someone in fresh, then surely they want a fresh take on it, right? That's sort of how I felt. And I think that helped during the audition, but during the actual work of the process, I really, really relied on the directors and the writers and the whole team to to craft a version of her personality mm -hmm. that fit what they wanted for Remake. It wasn't until much later on that I was able to say, mm, I sort of like this line's interpretation a little bit better and, and bring a little bit more of myself later on in the process. Gotcha. Uh, and it kind of ties in nicely with the second question, which is from Ian says, what was the direction that the director producer was asking for you, for your character that may have uh, been needed or uh, that you needed to understand prior to recording? What kind of, what kind of hints were they giving you towards the character, the way that it should be portrayed? Did they tell you she should be this innocent um, flower girl? Because I mean, I've um, without being too specific, I've, I've played a, a, a fair chunk of the game now and uh, she's quite quirky. She's, she's actually, she, she's, I, I'm not at the point where I have met her again. Um, mm, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the, just the whole, the flower scene, you, your character's quite quirky, quite, quite a um, bit of sarcasm in there too. A little bit of, yes. uh, bit of juice and it's not what I expected, but I like it. Yes. Uh, there, like we've talked about, have been many iterations of Aerith's mm -hmm. character and she has developed very interestingly over time, separate from a lot of the other characters in the game, because are we doing spoilers? spoilers? Don't, well, we're going to, we don't, don't, don't spoil. Not spoilers for remake spoilers. I, for the wouldn't, original. I would not no, mention No spoilers. It. Yeah. Okay. So Aerith has a very interesting character development mm -hmm. uh, that extends over a long period of time. So one of the things that, is interesting is a lot of people remember her character from later iterations like Advent Children mm. versus her character in the actual script of original Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. And so with Remake, we wanted to find a way to get back to that 
very first few moments, especially because remake covers the very first few moments yeah. of the story. And um, while she does have this sort of sweet, innocent flower girl nature to her, there's definitely that that is a part of her. There's also that sassy side. Mm-hmm. And I think that part is actually in the script, in the original Final Fantasy VII, but it was very much left up to interpretation because it was just text. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't see her that way, you weren't going to read the lines that way. But with voice acting, I'm able to bring that element back. And it feels very fresh and modern and new to a lot of people, which is really exciting. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I think in Advent Children, uh, again, trying to avoid spoilers. And it's really the <laughs> it's only, so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's the only word I can really use for the way that they portrayed um uh, Aerith in it is that she was rather no, I, I got it. I can't really avoid it. Spiritual. She has a very monotone voice. She's very gospel like, almost like godlike, like an angel talking to you. So angelic. You, yes. Yeah. So angelic. Thank you. And um, how awful you're telling a British guy words. That's that's savage. That really is. <laughs> um, but that that's exactly it. Very angelic. And in the first couple scenes, and really before the game had come out, and many people have played it now. Um, many, many, many more will be playing it tomorrow. But the 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 only real part of Aerith that we had seen prior to the game was just this is for you, and it didn't really show too much. But then when you right. actually watch that whole scene, the amount of sass in the character is heavy. And yeah. it's great. It really gives the yeah. character more of a three-dimensional feel rather than it just being flat, right? Because as you said, you're just reading it off a screen. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be it's quite exciting. Yes. I hope people continue to love that aspect of her. From what I've seen, there's some good stuff. So I'm pleased. Have you had a chance to play a fair chunk of the game? No. Yet? Oh. No, I've played the demo and oh. that's it. My, I've, I've, I'm about eight eight hours in, I think where I am right now. So, so exciting. Yeah. So, okay. The next question, um, is from Reb. Um, and they ask, do you cosplay Aerith and (laughs) what name do you prefer? Aeris or Aerith? So I would love to cosplay Aerith. That's something that I've gotten hugely requested. I would love to do it, but I cannot make anything with my hands. I cannot sew a button. I'm terrible at it. So my cosplays are closet cosplays where I'll wear like a pink shirt and a necklace or uh, for the press conference, I actually did a little casual cosplay of Aerith where I wore a red jacket and uh, pink pants. Um, So that's like my version of like inspired by Aerith, but I'm going to need to collaborate with an actual cosplayer to do a professional Aerith cosplay. Like I can think well, of, I think of like Ray Chase, I think of Robbie Damon, I think of Liam Mulvey, um, Adrian Boucher, all of these voice actors who have gone to Coupacons, uh, other conventions and just been given full outfits. It's, it happened. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, well, I'm someone, actually, go ahead. I actually have a collaboration with a cosplayer planned okay. uh, to do an Aerith cosplay together. However, uh, coronavirus stopped that in its tracks right so as soon as we are able to actually physically get together i'm sure that will happen it's going to be amazing no yeah, one of the Keep best presentations i think i've seen i'm not sure how many people saw the behind the scenes of it but there's a voice actor his name is adrian boucher he does the voice of glauca in um the kingsglaive movie for final fantasy 15 he was gifted um um a full outfit full cosplay wow. and he, he cried like and I don't blame him it well, was a very a move, it was a very moving moment um and it was really quite something to capture and I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure it will happen and uh, those those you know incredible moments are are yet to come for you but uh, I think you could pull it off for sure Oh yeah, I'm very excited yeah. about it. I think it'd be a lot of fun. A lot of people it'd be have my been, first cosplay. A lot of people have been commenting like when they see the the photographs of the voice actors they're going like a live movie could be totally doable here. So hey, uh, give Square I'm some available. ideas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Aerith or Aerith? Yeah, I'm assuming Aerith. It's Aerith to me. Mm. But one of the things that I'm okay with, because you were able to make their names however you wanted in the original game, mm-hmm. it's okay if you call her Aerith. If that's who she is to you, that's okay. And I respect it. It's just not who she is to me. You respect it. It's wrong, but you respect it. (laughs) 
So we have a question um, from, it's either Louis or Lewis, um, and they ask, one of my favorite pieces of music ever is Aerith's theme. Do you have a track from the Final Fantasy series that you that you always play whenever you're in, in the mood? Or, I'm not sure what that means. Um, also, are you a Chocobo or a Moogle person? We'll, we'll start with the music. What kind of sure. Final Fantasy track for you, um, I use the term loosely, gets you in the mood? Which Final Fantasy track do you, do you like? I imagine there's a lot in the 14 series for sure. There's a lot of good music in Final Fantasy 14. And sometimes when I'm just playing around in the game and enjoying being in the world, I'll go to the uh, orchestrion and just listen to some of the different soundtracks that are on there. Um, as far as a favorite, oh, it's so hard. I just like them all. Mm -hmm. It's like asking my favorite food. I like all food. <laughs> um what about a, would you say that the like you I, I guess you would have not heard too much of the remake music have you heard the LP the vinyl that came out no I haven't oh it's good no there's a lot of, of good renditions I, yeah I, I I believe it and I'm ready but uh, yeah I've been I've been saving that for when I actually stream remake did you get a chance to listen to Melodies of Midgar I think we gave you no I don't think you have a copy of Melodies of Midgar because you weren't at the launch parties I have to get you one and send you one I have to get a copy of yeah, that it's really quite good it's quite stunning It's uh, it actually has um, flowers blooming in the church which is obviously an heiress theme and uh, it's definitely worth listening to oh, I'm so excited okay. uh, Chocobo or Moogle mm -hmm. careful Moogle. really yeah yeah, I, I just, I, I'm not a bird person. I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question comes from James. Uh, some guests have said they don't know who they were auditioning for at the time. Did you know that you were auditioning for Aerith at the time? And were you intimidated by such an iconic character? Well, we have already covered that you, you know, you, you were intimidated. Did you specifically know that you were going in for Aerith, though? Yes. Okay, so that, that must have, that must have really put you on, on the nerves that must have really I would have been really nervous just going in I think it helped because I was able to do a bunch of research before the audition even began mm -hmm. so I was able to go in really prepared whereas if I didn't know the character I I would not have treated it with such care and and with so much time beforehand mm -hmm. so I'm really glad that I knew what character I was going in for beforehand and even if they, I don't know if they actually said the character's name. It's hard for me to remember that far back, but I didn't need much to know who they were talking about. Gotcha. <laughs> As a gamer, I, I knew pretty, pretty well. Mm -hmm. So one, one thing I do know is that when the 15 voice actors went in, a lot of them actually didn't know the parts that they were going for. And they actually did lines for multiple characters and then ended up with one of them. And, you know, they, they just it was just random selection. So like rolling the dice. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. OK, so the next question uh, comes in from Nikki. She asks, Aerith, Barrett, Tifa and Cloud are featured on many um, pot noodles and pastas uh, in the UK right now as part of the final. Fan I'm sure you've seen photographs of these, haven't you? It's the pasta and sauce, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, the question is, if you could be any flavor of pasta, which which flavor would you be? Ooh, I don't okay. know if the UK folk are going to have to answer this because we don't have anything in Canada for this, but I have seen it. Is the, are the characters on specific flavors right now or is it just completely random? Because I know that there's the pot noodles, I think, and then there's the super noodles and there's the... I'm not sure if it's if it's flavor specific, but anyway, I've while they I've only seen the pasta and sauce. Oh, well, there's... Oh, there's different hmm. ones. Okay, so... I would say I have this recipe for a bacon Alfredo. <laughs> That's like the best sauce in the world because it's it's light like an Alfredo, but it's got that like smoky, meaty baconness. Gotcha. If I had to choose, I would want to be the kind that is the best. So is anything, that fair? anything with bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see what the chat here say about the flavors because I'm actually kind of curious. It's Bachelors, I think, the brand. Aerith is curry flavor, apparently. Ooh. So you're spicy. That seems accurate. Yeah. Some accuracy. Yeah. I'll allow it. 
but also warm and comforting at the same time. So one of the things that you would have experienced um, back in, when was it, November, you came to Kubicon for the first time. Uh, yes, Vancouver's our smallest event, but uh, still kind of gave Didn't you feel a... feel like it. No, I'm sure, I'm sure it was It was quite... I'm, I'm really curious as to, you know, what, what was it like uh, now that you've... Because when I spoke to you on stage at the time, you'd only been in the room for about three hours. Now that you've had a chance to... I did actually watch your stream back um, when you were sharing some of the loot there that you'd received and, and you s said very, very kind words. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. But, uh, you know, how is it to walk into a room and then suddenly be idolized almost you know and you've got people next to you like you've got like you're in a little in a room just before starting talking to adam crowsdale and he's talking you kind of outlining the basics of how the event works and like what was going through your head i would say that it was it was very different than i expected because i i had been to I'm a convention lover. I love going to conventions. I've mm -hmm. been to every convention I could possibly go to in Southern California because of content creation. You know, the VidCons, E3s, TwitchCons, all that. But I had never been to a convention as a guest, as an actor, and as a feature of people wanting to meet me. I'd always gone wanting to meet other people. Mm -hmm. I'd never gone to a convention as people oh, wanting to meet me. Like a role reversal kind of thing. It was a role reversal. And so I think because I had come from that background, I never saw it as a way of like, ah, oh, finally, I get the attention I deserve. Mm -hmm. It was it was never anything like that. It was very much like, I want to make sure that I give everyone here the most genuine love and attention that I can give them because they've come from far. They've spent money to be here and they are bringing me gifts. I, I didn't expect that at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave any room in my suitcase to k take anything home, but they came with this, this intense passion and generosity that, that really took me by surprise. And so even by the end of the day, I was so exhausted. I had almost lost my voice I was so tired, but I thought I just need to give everyone as much love as I can. Like that was my number one top priority the whole day. And, gotcha. and it was easy because each person would come up with this joy and spirit that I just got to reflect and, and bask in. And mm. that was incredibly, incredibly just deep in your heart satisfying mm. to be part of that kind of community feel. Unbelievable. Good. And then in the evening, we had the ball. Um, and uh, yes. all the evening events are quite different. So the ball in Vancouver was only a couple hundred deep. The, the, we just the, Before that, we'd done an event in London, England. By the way, when you did your evil laugh there with your uh, people have come to see me, you pulled off a British accent. I don't know if you realize that. So you should add that to your resume. Do it now. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, all all good evil people are British. I think that's. I think we can all agree on that. I mean, I didn't mean it. Oh, that it came way, out. There was definitely it, a bit of Brit there. It truly, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's accurate. Yeah, yeah, all the British people I've ever met me. are evil. Yeah, you yes. went for it. Well, thanks. <laughs> Stop this call. Bye, guys. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, so the the evening event. I know that you you kind of did a casual cosplay, as you said, because you dressed up yes. in Aerith's dress there. That's and right. there was you were you were actually posed with a bunch of people who were wearing a similar outfit. That must yeah. be really cool. That was so cool. Honestly, I just was <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh, you look beautiful. Your dress is so amazing. Oh, you look beautiful. Your dress is so amazing. Oh my gosh, you look so good. So mm. I took so many photos of so many of the people there because everyone just looks so amazing. Like I could tell they put so much work into like the hair and the makeup and making sure every little detail of the outfit was perfect. Oh. Chef's kiss. So you've gone from Brit, Brit to so Italy great. now. Well, I'm I'm an international, <laughs> international human, apparently. For sure. <laughs> and I know that, um, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, um, that uh, I noticed um, when, I, I can't remember if you pointed it out or I noticed, but you had something special done um, uh, for the fact that you were playing Aerith in yes. the form of a flower. Do you mind talking about that? Sure. Um, I was so excited about Aerith from the very first moment that I auditioned for her. And then when I booked the role, I just thought, this is 
This is going to be a part of me forever. This experience, even from, from E3, the announcement goes off, being a part of the love of this franchise, even just a tiny part of it, has been so formative because that's how big this project is. That's mm. how excited people are for Remake. That's how much love they have for this story and these characters. Being just a tiny part of that, even just for a tiny amount of time, I thought, this is a part of me. And um, I only have one other tattoo. So I'm not the type of person who gets tattoos for whenever, why ever. Uh, but I thought I need to... I need to find a way to to honor this on me. Mm. And so a friend of mine was going to get a tattoo and I said, you know what? I really want to get one too. So I got a Lily tattoo. Did the tattoo her. artist ask why at the time? No. Didn't 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 tattoo come up in artist conversation. Nope. Nope. Like, whatever. Just just no felt reason. like it. <laughs> just a Lily tattoo on a girl's ankle. Basic. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's a, it's a, it it's a, a and I, and I'm glad that you confirmed that you waited to confirm that you actually got the part because it would have been incredibly yes. awkward to go yes. to a clinic to then have it removed. <laughs> Please take this flower off me. It, it, that's why I'm trying so hard not to get fired. It's no, purely think, just because I'm already inked. I think you're good. I think you're <laughs> safe now. Now that is quite a big deal. In fact, actually at the last KubaCon in Scotland, I was meant to be getting my first tattoo. I've never had a tattoo before. Uh, there is a really talented tattoo artist in the community called uh, Kaylee Henderson. She does amazing stuff. I'll show you some of it sometime. It I really is absolutely oh, it's incredible. Um, like I think the the correct term for when someone does your arm is a sleeve. Like she'll yes. she'll do the whole sleeve, and oh. uh, like she does Sephiroth, and it's oh it's incredible. We were just going to get my me and my wife were just going to get Moogle crowns. One was like a, oh. like a and it was a cute idea, but Nat got delayed. Her flight got cancelled, and then oh, it was no. all cancelled. So. It's unfortunate, but next time, perhaps. Next time. It's definitely a big deal to do something like that. At least your first time is. It's it's less of a big deal your second time or your third or fourth or 18th, mm. but your first tattoo definitely is a big one. Did you know John got a tattoo when he was in Glasgow? No, yeah. I didn't know. Next time you see him, ask ask to see I it. Will. It's not in a bad place. <laughs> it's, in a, it's, it's on his Good. on the back of his neck. It's oh, really no, I cool. Seen and, it. Yeah, is yeah. it Final Fantasy related? No, it's it's family related. I, I think oh, if I remember, he got the name that. of his kids uh, written oh, on his neck there. So that's so cute. And um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, and he, he actually I think if I remember rightly, Kaylee had actually drew um, the the Barrett tattoos on his arm, and he was thinking about getting it next time. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. So, that's so cool. So. Um, okay, so there's just a, a couple um, other little um, bits and bobs that we wanted to um, go through. Um, sure. The character of Aerith. Um, do you think that there's any part of you in Aerith? Did you take anything in who, in who you are as a person and put that into the character? Because obviously acting, you, you must bring a part of yourself into it. But do you, do you see any of yourself in Aerith? Yes, absolutely. I think that... There's there's two things, and one of them is the the sassiness. I think that I have always had a very like playful relationship with people, and I really like to uh, you know poke fun or a smart remark here, sharp retort there. I've always like had... call British people evil, that kind of thing. Yes, I get it. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I think her sassiness is something that she and I share. It's a it's a native language for me, sarcasm and, and sassiness. So I think that's something sort of surface level that we have in common. But I think there's also something on a deeper level that she and I do have in common. And I think it's a level of, I guess, spirituality would be the right word, mm. but it's almost a, a instinctual knowledge of of what brings us all together and it it's this idea of you always have to keep pushing forward because everything's going to be okay in the end mm -hmm. we are going to win against this hard thing Aerith has this sort of trust and faith that everything's going to be okay 
And I, I think one of the one of the words that um, that Square Enix uses is hope. And I think that um, that's something that she and I share on a very deep level. And I hope that I've been able to to show that in her character is that everything will be OK. You just have to keep moving forward. And um, which kind of speaks true of the whole situation that the world's facing right now. So it does. And if remake was going to come out at any time, I even with the craziness of early releases and late delays of shipping and everything crazy with that and trust me it's been crazy for everyone Mm -hmm. even with that i would want remake to come out now to remind people to keep faith to keep fighting keep your spirits up and connect with the people around you surely that is the that's the underlying story of seven isn't it To, to not give up to continue the fight right Yes. Well, again, thank you. Um, thank you for continuing to be a part of the KoopaCon community. Um, apologies that we, that uh, Montreal did not happen the way that we had hoped. I'm sure that in time yeah. it will. Um, we, we do have it our... It will, no do, matter what. We do have our fingers crossed that our July date will hold, yeah. um, assuming that, uh, you know, they, they, they start to... Um, sort the curve out uh, cases unfortunately do continue to rise and uh, of what i've seen of Aerith through the trailers and what i've had the privilege of experiencing the game you've you've done an incredible job it very much suits the character um, and i think that the the fandom have responded very very favorably to it so congratulations thank you so much it was it was hard work but i'm really glad people are liking it i'm really really glad mm-hmm and again thank you very much for joining uh, me today i'm going to um let you go now because we've we've taken up quite a bit of your time here um so i'm just going to let you uh, say goodbye to folks before i pull the plug on you and bye uh, everyone thanks for having me and uh, i'm going to take a momentary break here um but i will be back afterwards and uh, we'll be back with uh, john next so thanks again brianna Yay! thank you thanks bye